If you accept dental insurance in your practice, dental insurance verification is probably the most important process you can implement in your practice to prevent future headaches. Here's what we're gonna talk about. How to systematize the process of insurance verification using a template, the specific details you need to know to make sure you get paid. How to best use the insurance verification template to avoid wasting your team's time over on the phone and how you should customize it for your office. Before getting into the details, let's first get into why you need to verify dental insurance for patients. In a perfect world, you can tell your patients they're responsible for finding out their own benefits. Um, sort of like how it's in the medical world. Unfortunately for us dentists, it just doesn't work that way. You'll quickly find that patients don't want to move forward with their treatment, especially if they don't know what's covered and what's not and what their out of pocket is gonna be. So consider these scenarios. Denial of payment from insurance for a new patient's preventive visit. Denial of payment from insurance for sealants placed on a 10 year old patient, even though coverage was at 100%. Denial of payment for scaling a root planing, even though there's 80% coverage for a patient with no history of periodontal treatment. Denial of a payment for a re-cement of a crown on an emergency patient. These things happen every single day in dental offices. And I've had every single one of these happen in my practice when I started. When I first opened the doors to my practice, I did a lot of the insurance verification calls myself. How did I do them? Well, I was actually an associate at another practice while my practice was open. Okay, so on the days it was closed, I would take patient phone calls. You know, I had a voice over IP phone system, so I would be able to take the patient phone calls from my cell phone, and uh, I know I would have missed calls. So what I would do during lunchtime is I would call these patients back, get all the insurance details, and then I would call the insurance companies and actually handwrite these benefits down on a piece of paper. And this is what it looked like. Not sure if you can read the handwriting, but here I've got some very basic information, so that's the percentage of coverage on categories like preventive, basic, major, et cetera, preventive history, history on x-rays, so on. It's a mess, but I did whatever I had to do to make sure that patient was eligible for and active under the insurance, as well as we were gonna get paid for the services we we're gonna provide. If you're the doctor, I can't stress how important it is to do this exercise yourself so you understand how insurance works. Yes, we all wanna focus on dentistry. That's what we went to school for. Uh, we did not go to school to, you know, to learn the business, the insurance side and all of that stuff. However, um, if you're the owner, you are in your own practice, which is your business. And unfortunately, no one cares more for your business than you. So I've actually written a detailed post on dental insurance verification but since then, I've received lots of emails about people asking me, well, why do I have to know this? Can't I just outsource this to another agency? Can't I just uh, you know, leave this up to my team to understand what they're supposed to do? Yes, you will delegate this to your team eventually. But when you're starting out, it is important to understand how this process works because otherwise you would not know where the mistakes happen. Okay, you need to understand why that insurance payment is much lower than what you expected. Okay, back to what I was saying earlier. After I did this process myself repetitively over and over again, you know, I turned it into a nice template. Okay, uh, by the way, this template is available for download. Uh, you can find the link at the bottom of this video. Um, you should be able to download it and follow the template um, and do it in your practice. And I know what you're thinking. That's a whole lot of information for each patient that you have to fill out or your team has to fill out, okay? And it's gonna be very time consuming over the phone, especially with the insurance rep. Just bear with me till the end and I'll go over some techniques you can use to save time, okay? And speed up this process. And in fact, I've split this video into two parts. In the second part of this video, I'm actually gonna show you how I've moved away from using the template and using other techniques to speed up this entire process of insurance verification. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the template and break it up into pieces and we're gonna go over each section so you understand what the information is used for. If you grasp, if you understand the whole concept, it becomes super simple for you and your team to together modify this entire process in any way you want to customize it for your practice, okay? And I'll, again, I'll show you some of those techniques in the end. And also I'll cover some of that in the second video. So let's start. So there are a few different ways to verify patients' dental insurance benefits. So one is by filling out the insurance verification template like we just discussed, okay? It's the most time consuming because of all the details you're gonna have to fill out or your team is gonna have to fill out. Uh, but again, more on that later. Second is facts. Different insurance companies are gonna give you varying information on their faxes. Some insurance give you a whole lot of detail that you may not even need to call the insurance rep. Some some companies are gonna give you not much and you it's like a waste of time reading the facts and you still have to make the phone call, look at the online portal, et cetera. Then there is the online portals. Most of the insurance companies are gonna have online portals from which you can pull up patient information, at least uh, verify their eligibility, 
find out, make sure they're active on the plan and get varying amounts of information regarding their benefits. You should have online accounts for all the insurances you network with for your practice, okay? And all the username passwords should just be stored in like an Excel sheet so it's super easy for your team to access on a daily basis. Like I said earlier, there's things you should not rely on the online portals for. Uh, like for example, you should not rely on stipulations for scaling and route planning um, because sometimes the online portals are not gonna show you that, hey, you're supposed to wait X number of days after a pro fee or et cetera. There are also automated services. These integrate with your practice management system but they are not as accurate, okay? I have personally never used them. However, they do not give accurate details such as stipulations when it comes to, for example, Perio or Prost. DentalExchange.com or Claim Connect is the service I use in my practice for sending claims. And they also have an integrated service that integrates with Open Dental that provides eligibility checks. However, I have heard Although I have not personally used it, I have heard that it's not accurate when you download all the insurance details into the patient's chart. So I'm gonna start with the first method, which I mentioned, which is following the insurance template. Starting at the top is your basic insurance info that identifies the plan the patient has. To make the call to the insurance company, you'll need the subscriber name, the subscriber date of birth, subscriber ID, the social or social security, in some cases if the patient doesn't have the subscriber ID, and your dental practice tax ID. I'm not gonna cover every single item, but I'm gonna cover the most important items that you need to understand to make sure you can go through this template. Dental benefits as of date. Um, you should always write down the date when you are verifying the patient insurance benefits. The reason why this is because if the patient is coming back to your practice every six months, let's say, let's say patient upgrades their plan and it does happen, the group number may not change, okay? Uh, but their benefits have changed, all right? So let's say you go back and call and re verify the benefits. You're gonna look at the date and say, okay, yeah, it's been a year and a half or two years since I last verified. Let's go ahead and call up the insurance, make sure everything is still same, okay? So the writing down, every time you call the insurance or your team calls the insurance company, you should just write down, get in the habit of writing down the date you're making that call. Benefits used to date. How much of the insurance dollars in the year the patient has already used as of today? Why is this important? If you get a patient in your practice that has just left another practice and has shown up at your door saying, hey, uh, they wanna continue with your office now, well, you need to find out if they, let's say the patient left in the middle of some work and they've already used up some of the insurance dollars from the previous dentist, well, now your office needs to know how much they've used uh, because if you're doing a crown, for example, and uh, the insurance reimbursement is going to be estimated of $400, but they've only got 300 left on their plan and you don't know that, well, when you're sending that claim, your payment is gonna be lower than what you expect. What your team should be doing is you need to know at the time of verification whether or not any benefits have been used up to date. This information should then be updated in the practice management system. I use Open Dental in my practice, so there's a way to do that. And I'm assuming all the other systems out there do the same thing, like Dentrix, EgoSoft, et cetera. You wanna do this so to be able to accurately tell the patient that, hey, this is what's remaining on your plan, this is what's expected, and this is what your out of pocket's gonna be. So you avoid any financial surprises. Primary or secondary insurance. A patient can be covered by more than one insurance plan. One of the plans may be their own, meaning uh, their employer is offering that dental insurance plan. They may also have additional coverage from their spouse's um, employer. I'm gonna leave the details of the primary and secondary details for a separate video. But when you're verifying dental insurance benefits, you should write down whether or not the plan you're verifying is the patient's primary or secondary plan. If it happens to be secondary, you need to find out what the primary plan is and then call up that information and do the same exact thing. So sometimes what happens is, let's say a patient calls your practice to schedule an appointment and your team goes ahead and collects the insurance information so they uh, can verify their benefits. What happens is the patient may not even be aware that the insurance details they're giving you is their secondary insurance, okay? They don't know that. Um, and what happens is you go ahead and verify the benefits, but you, 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 you don't find out whether it's a secondary or primary. So now let's say the patient comes into your practice, you do some work and you generate a claim. Now what's gonna happen is that claim is gonna get kicked back and the insurance company is gonna say, hey, you need to send it to the primary first and then send it to us, you know, send to the secondary insurance, the EOB from the primary insurance. Again, these details we'll get into in another uh, another video, but uh, it, it is a detail that you need to find out what whether the uh, plan is primary or secondary for that patient. Fee schedule. When you 
call up an insurance company to verify benefits, you're going to ask, hey, what fee schedule do you follow? For example, if you call, called up Delta Dental of New Jersey, you can pretty much assume they follow the fee schedule of Delta Dental of New Jersey. Okay. However, there are certain plans that you may not even be aware of. Uh, let's say the patient calls your office and they say they're part, uh, they have this insurance plan and your team is not aware of it. You know, what happens is if that insurance plan is following a fee schedule of a plan that you are in network with, then you actually can take that insurance, okay? So whenever you have a patient that calls your insurance, that calls your office, for example, this is what happened in the beginning to my practice. You know, I was still learning and uh, there were some names that came up and I would say, uh, you know what? I would never say no, that we don't take that insurance, especially if I didn't know the name of the insurance company. So what I would do is I tell the patient, let me go ahead and find out. I would write down the provider relations department phone number. I'd call up the department and say, hey, uh, what fee schedule do you follow? It turns out they follow the fee schedule of another bigger insurance company that we are in network with, okay? And then I can go ahead and verify those benefits, then let the patient know, yes, we verified the benefits, let's go ahead and schedule that appointment. So the most important thing in the beginning that you should take away from this is this, is that don't ever say no to a patient. Let's say uh, you haven't heard of the patient's insurance company, don't just say no get the provider relations department phone number, get all the details from the patient so you can actually make the call to the insurance company and find out the details. Maybe you can find out whether you should enroll with that plan. Maybe you'll get multiple patients like, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm getting more, more than five, six patients who are asking uh, if, if we take this insurance and I haven't heard of them, let me find out. Let's get their fee schedule. Maybe I should credential with them. Okay, so don't also assume that you're not in network with them because you just have to find out what fee schedule they follow because the fee schedule they follow may be uh, of the one that you are in network with. So I'll give you an example. In the beginning when we started, um, my even I didn't know this, my front desk, she took a call from a patient who called to find out whether or not we take principal financial insurance. We had not heard of it, we were new, um, and so was my front desk. And um, what ended up happening was when we called the company, Principal Financial, when we called the insurance rep, uh, they followed Emeritus fee schedule. Now Emeritus we knew because we were credentialed with them. So then we called the patient back and let them know that, hey, yes, we verified your benefits. And then we went ahead and scheduled the appointment. Now over time, you'll learn uh, to know most of the names that pop up from the patient in your uh, neighborhood around your practice. Um, but when you're new and you're starting out, you need to understand this so you don't turn patients away. All right, let's continue. Deductible. When asking insurance whether deductible applies or not, make sure to verify whether or not it applies to preventive services. For preventive services, some insurances will apply deductible to x-rays and not to exams or cleanings. So make sure to verify with the insurance. Most patients assume their cleaning x-rays are covered twice a year 100%. So make sure to verify with the insurance to prevent any surprises in the office. Moving on, let's start with the category of services, starting with preventive. When it comes to preventive services, verifying frequencies, how often the service is allowed within a benefit period, and history of services is extremely important. The most commonly used exam codes are 0120, which is a periodic exam, the 0140 limited exam, 0150, the new patient comprehensive exam. The template file has check boxes for the common frequencies I've encountered so far. Some plans have a separate frequency for 0140 and 0120, which is great, but most plans have a shared frequency among all three exam types, which is usually two in a benefit period, calendar year or by consecutive months. The code D0150, which is the comprehensive exam, is usually every three years per single provider. However, I've also seen every five years per provider, as well as just once in a lifetime while the patient is on this insurance, which is ridiculous. You also need to find out whether or not x-rays are included in preventive. Most plans are gonna consider x-rays under preventive, and if preventive services are covered at 100%, then the x-rays are also covered at 100%. Panel slash FMX. When you're calling to verify insurance, find out the last date of history and frequency for both the panel and FMX. Most plans have a shared frequency between panel and FMX. Okay, let's keep going. Sealants. You should also get the history of any of last placement of sealants. Even though coverage may be listed at 100%, you should know if the new 10 year old patient in your chair had sealants placed last year. Upon clinical exam, you don't see any sealants on the first molars. You ask mom if the child has had any sealants placed. Mom says, well, I don't remember. History of sealants should be on file for the patient before you let mom know if they'll owe anything out of pocket. All right, that's enough for preventive services. Let's move on to basic services. You may notice on the template, I've grouped perio, endo, restorative, and oral surgery under basic services. 
That's because that is the case with majority of the insurance plans. However, I've come across plans that will have different coverage for periodontal services than for oral surgery services. For this reason, I've created a section for each of the four types of services. So let's start with periodontal services. Scaling and root planing, which is SRP code D4341. In addition to coverage percentage, you'll want to find out if there's any stipulations. Some insurances require the patient to wait 15 to 30 days after a general cleaning or profi to be eligible for SRP benefit. I've learned this the hard way, so make sure this is filled out when verifying insurances. Doing all four quads in one day. Some insurances do not allow all four quads to be completed in a single appointment, so make sure to have this filled out. Frequency and documentation. Knowing how often the procedure is allowed is important, especially if the patient has had history of scaling. Most insurances will require perio charting and either FMX or panel, so make sure to have this filled out just in case you don't have an FMX panel on file. Perio maintenance, D4910. Some insurances will allow frequency of perio maintenance visits in addition to the profi frequencies, but for majority, the frequency is shared. Stipulations apply to perio maintenance also. Patient needs to have history of periodontal therapy. Some insurances will dictate how many days you must wait after scaling or active perio therapy, so make sure before you give an appointment for peri maintenance visit, this requirement is satisfied. Up next is endodontic services. Now this is pretty straightforward. Some insurances actually have different coverage percentage for anterior teeth versus premolars and molars. So make sure to have this filled out. All right, let's talk about crown and bridge. When getting coverage for crown and bridge, make sure to find out if there's a downgrade. Most insurances will downgrade 2750 to a 2790 or a 2792. Insurances may downgrade all posterior teeth or only the molars, so make sure that's filled out correctly. Let's talk about core buildup, where you have just the core buildup, D2950, or a posting core, which is a 2954. Some insurances have a different coverage for post core and buildups than for restorative or crown coverage, so make sure to find out exactly what it is. Be careful with core buildups. Lots of plans are increasingly bundling the core buildups and crowns. What this means is that plans will not pay a separate payment for core buildups. Aetna, for instance, have increased their documentation required to get paid on a core buildup. They want a pre-op photo of the tooth after root canal, a post-op photo of the tooth after core buildup, okay? Not an x-ray, a photo prior to the comp prep, pre-op x-ray, a post-op x-ray of the tooth, and a narrative, okay? And after submitting all this, the insurance still may deny payment on this. What I've done for core buildups in my practice, whenever a core buildup is treatment planned, I assume no payment from any insurance, whatever fee for that core buildup is for that specific insurance, I quote that plus the out-of-pocket for the crown together to the patient. And I still submit the claim for the core buildup. And if there is a payment, which means now the patient will have a credit on their account. Okay. So this is something we started implementing literally the second year into practice because I learned this was happening quite a bit. And um, I always, like I mentioned earlier, I always, always try to avoid financial surprises with patients. So this is something we started doing and it's worked really well. I haven't had any trouble or issue with any patients. What ends up happening is uh, when the insurance does make a payment toward core buildup, there will be a credit on the patient account. And I'd rather have credits than balance on the accounts. Let's move on to oral surgery. Simple versus surgical extraction. Some insurances have different percent coverage for simple versus surgical, so make sure this is filled out. When verifying insurances, find out if the patient's medical insurance needs to be billed first for extractions. That's why we've listed different codes for extractions. Some insurances may say, for example, for partial bony and complete bony impactions, medical insurance needs to be billed first. I've also seen some plans requiring medical insurance to be billed first for any surgical extractions for code D7210. Let's talk about implant and grafting services. Bone graft 7953 for ridge preservation versus D4263 periodontal bone graft. They're both different and some insurances cover one and not the other, so make sure to verify this. Implant benefits. Implant placement, D6010, the custom abutment, 6057, the prefab abutment, 6056, the implant crown, 6058 or 6059. Verify if there are any implant benefits. Some insurance provide no benefits towards placement, but may provide benefit towards the implant restoration. In my practice, whenever I treat implant patients for implants and they happen to have dental insurance, I always, always send in a pre-authorization with the code 6010-6057 and 6058. So now your office will know exactly what the dollar amount estimated coverage is going to be for these services. Orthodontic services. When verifying orthodontic benefits, make sure to verify how the benefits are paid. Most insurances do not pay in one lump sum, 
They will pay periodically, but you need to find out whether or not you need to submit a claim. If the representative states the benefits are paid automatically, periodically, you need to find out how frequently the payments will be made. So let's talk about how to streamline this entire process of insurance verification. You've obviously realized that answering every single question on the template for each patient uh, it's going to be super time consuming and if you do this for more than one patient for the same plan while you're on this phone with the same rep you're pretty much going to piss off that agent and this has happened and they will just tell you that hey they can't continue to do this and they're just going to uh, point you to go to their online portal not that we should care whether they're pissed off or not but it's their job but they're trained to tell you to go to the either the fax or the online portal. So here's some tips on how to use this template. In the beginning, when you're on the phone with the rep and you're doing this for all the new patients, time yourself. Write down the amount of time it takes you to verify each patient's benefit and see where you can improve for each patient. If a mom calls for an appointment for a 15 year old, it doesn't make sense to get benefits on periodontal, the implant, ortho, extractions, etc. If the parent makes the appointment for themselves later, it's okay to come back and get these detailed benefits later. What you should do for the 15 year old is just access the facts or, and get the information from the online portal. So it's not always possible to verify patients insurance benefits before they visit. Because if you have a walk-in, for example, what your team is gonna have to do is they should call the insurance company, get their facts, uh, at least make sure they're eligible, make sure they're active on the plan and access the online portal to get as much information as possible to make sure you can see them at that day for that limited exam or emergency visit. What you should also do is during the day, set aside a time to do these kind of calls. Like if you if you find any downtime, over time you'll realize that, hey, around three to 4 p.m. or you know we tend to get not get that, that many phone calls. So around that time, your team should be making insurance phone calls and getting insurance benefit breakdowns for patients, okay? And try to group these phone calls by uh, by insurance. So if, you, if you've got two MetLife patients, those should be grouped together. So while you're on the phone with the rep, you can do multiple calls with the same insurance plan. Now, over time, you're gonna develop your own process for uh, doing insurance verification, even if you're using this template. The template is only meant to organize information. Okay, so you can add to it or remove details that are unnecessary for your practice. For instance, in my practice, I no longer do molar endo or wisdom teeth, so I actually skip those details. All right, so some closing statements. Always bill for the work you do on your patients to the insurance company to prevent future headaches with patients, especially when it comes to accounting details. Always remember, as I mentioned earlier, as much as we want our patients to remember their dental benefits, they will not remember them. Even if you've gone over a treatment plan, told them line item by line item, everything, they will not remember. They're not gonna remember that their perio is only covered at 80% or they have a stipulation they've got to wait. They just don't care. All they care about is the bottom line cost. This one is the most important. Uh, patients hate financial surprises. It, it's in your in best interest as the practice owner, the manager, or even the front desk team member, you verify the patient benefits accurately so you can actually tell the patient what they're going to owe. And most importantly, you know that you're going to get paid for their services either your doctor performs or you perform for your patients. Like I mentioned in the start of this video, uh, I had to split this video into two parts because this is gonna become too long. Uh, the second video, I wanna go over how my office actually has stopped doing this template. We no longer use this template and I'm gonna go over the specific examples within Open Dental and few uh, shortcuts to streamline this whole process. Just because I no longer fill this template out doesn't mean that it's no longer important. Always remember, whenever I have a new trainee in the office, this is what they do. This is where I have them start. So it's super important for you as the owner, the doctor, or even for your team to go through these template, the details in the beginning so you understand how the process works. And then over time, you can customize it for your practice. You can take the details away and make it, make it much more concise. And that's it for today, guys. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.